Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friend, friend of the channel, and somebody who is turning my second book into an audible book, someone that we need to thank, Mr. Dion from Dion Talk. How you doing, buddy? Howdy. I'm doing great. I actually had no idea how long it would take to do that. It takes about <laughs> five hours a chapter so far. So wow. I'm enjoying it. We'll get there. Wow. Wow. I uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, you reached out to me, uh, I think it was Friday night, maybe Saturday morning going, hey, did you see meet Kevin's latest video about the stock market? And I'm like, nope, but I did go back and watch it. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot in there. Why don't you kind of talk about what your takeaway uh, was from it? So I actually watched quite a bit of his content. I, I, I prefer his real estate stuff to anything else. I stay away from anything that said stimulus, um, governor. But in this last one, I realized I'm going to start a drinking game when I'm watching. Ooh, what is, that? What, what is that? what is that? What do we got there? That is 10X Vodka. 10X Vodka. Stealing drinking from game. Grant Cardone. Probably not his label, but yeah, close enough. Close enough. And when you watch a Meet Kevin video, and it has anything to do with the stock market, every time he says the words, oh, crap, <laughs> you'll be laying on the floor by the end of the video, especially if it was like this last one that we watched. <laughs> oh, man. It was rough. Um, it looked like a ski slope. <laughs> Everything yeah, was going down. Yeah. He had quotes, exactly. He had quotes from worst closing month for some segment of it since 2008. Yeah, um, the NASDAQ, uh, lowest, lowest, worst month since 2008. Yep. And so the real estate investor in me is sitting back thinking, if any of that mattered to me, I would be doing more than a drinking game. I'd be drinking because I needed to drink. Um, yeah, there's so it's it's really weird because again, my journey starts after one of these crashes, right? I I was, you know, a, a meet Kevin type investor in 2000 and winning. Right. The other side of this is, you know, the curve was like this. The last two years, you couldn't lose. Buy the dip was the way to go. What people don't realize is the market has changed. You can't bet against the Fed. You can keep trying to buy the dip. Soon you become the dip. Yeah, it's not good. And uh, eventually you sell out. Usually there'll be a day of capitulation. It's not here yet. Uh, so mo more pain ahead, right? This is going lower. Woo! And I talked to a few friends who primarily invest in stocks. And the argument is, their argument is, so it's not the argument, it's their argument. It's more hands-off the amount of time that they watch charts and lose sleep over what's going on compared to the, I take about two hours a month, you have a much bigger portfolio, you're around four hours a month. We've had that conversation a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Com compared to the, the closest I've come to stocks would be my retirement account in March of 2020. I watched it plummet 30%. It just disappeared. That's never happened to the value of real estate. In, in my lifetime, we've had a 10% in a, you know, 8% in one hit one time. Mm -hmm. um, that's never happened in rent. Even when the big hit came to real estate, rents then went up because it created more renters in yeah. my area. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> the reason I want to make the video is there are some people who argue for the benefits of stocks and some people who argue for the benefits of real estate. I, bet, I argue for the benefit of mental peace. Exactly. I was hoping we'd get there. Yeah. One of the things that I have come to appreciate after 35 years of investing is if you, what you're investing is keeping you up at night, whatever it is, that's a sign. It's a sign. You're, you're overly leveraged. You're in a bad deal. Uh, you're, you're, you're over your skis. You're on margin. What, if your investments are keeping you up at night, pay attention, pay attention. Well, it was, and so that actually hits real estate too. Oh, it's for sure. You know, you know, we're watching what's happening with multifamily and then adjustable rates hitting now and what's happening to the interest rates. That's an asset type. I don't want to invest in either. I like the 30 year fixed rate debt. Um, again, it goes to mental peace. I don't have a five, seven or 10 loan reevaluation period with stocks. I don't have margin. I don't have something that's going to get called. Um, yeah, no, I, I, peace of mind's a big deal for me. It's what, Peace of mind for me is such a big deal. It is why I won't do a few things. 
one, one ritual at a time as a brand, as a company or whatever you want to call it, could be 10 times, 100 times bigger, but I would need employees. No, thank you. Second, I could be 10, 20 times bigger. I would have to syndicate. I'd have to pool capital. I have to do all these other things. No, thank you. I am totally fine being this slow little schmuck who just adds a couple of units every year. I'm okay with that. And it's because peace of mind. Um, I haven't lost a week of sleep in a long time. I haven't either. And even when I hear things like uh, somebody wants to get rid of the 1031 exchange, like the biggest impact that has to me is I might not sell. Like, yeah, like that's exactly. it's, it's just a little bit of thought that goes through. Um, there is risk with stock market. There's risk with real estate. And when we find the strategy that makes us sleep the, the best at night, right? Yeah. There's one other class of people, not a class, group of people that I'm more worried for. Mm. Those people who have a job and that is their only source oh, of income. Oh, good point. That's actually why I wanted to make the, ask you the questions from video one today is get people on the property ladder and find out who is the people we should be getting into the course one rental at a time. Because when people say, well, it's a, it's a good thing I don't invest in stocks because look how everything's going down. Well, it's going to impact the company. The company's going to impact who's employed there. And, and that source of income can go away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we're in stagflation heading into a recession. The next two to three years are not going to be great uh, from an economy perspective. But again, that's not, when I say those things, I believe them. I don't say them to be negative. I say them to get prepared and then take advantage of. What a lot of people don't realize is a lot of wealth, a lot of wealth gets created. Even stock market wealth. You will be able to build a rock solid stock portfolio at steep discounts with stuff on sale as this unfolds. You don't have to buy the, you don't have, People don't realize in stocks is you don't have to be fully invested. You just don't. And um, yeah, oh yeah, I'm dollar cost averaging every week. Well, okay, well, you, you bought all the way down, right? The, the market has changed. The Fed was your friend, now they're your enemy. And the Fed has said they don't care if this, the Fed said with, they said this, the, the harshest thing they said last Thursday, that was the day before we lost a thousand points or almost a thousand. Basically said, I don't care if the stock market crashes. My job is not to prop up asset prices. My job is to beat back inflation. If you're not paying attention, he's telling you what's coming. You can buy the dip because it worked the last two years and you will be the dip and then you'll be broke. So yeah, it's the last thing I want to say kind of about stocks and, and real estate, which is really, really funny. This is really, and it will happen again. Stocks were up here, then they're here. No, you lots of people will be blown out somewhere along this path. And then, then as the beginning of my first book, One Rental at a Time, is some people will get so burned that they will never look back. And that was me for 15 years. And I just went right to real estate. This stock market crash, this crypto crash, this NFT crash, some people will have had enough. And they will go into real estate because it is tangible. You can touch it. You can have 30-year fixed rate debt, passive income, tax benefits. It's just wacky. Some people just got to go touch the fire uh, and then they come to real estate. It, it, it is kind of funny. In a year or so, we will actually have more real estate investors than less. Well, the last thing to touch on is I really like how you said, you know, more money is created in a recession, more, you know, more wealth is created in a recession. You've said that in a couple of videos. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because for the last, you know, five to 10 years, I've been buying properties at market value. I'm not finding burrs. I haven't done rehabs. I'm not looking, I'm not off market. They're all from the MLS and consistently been able to get a good return, you know, 10% or better year one, make work completely optional without finding motivated sellers, without finding, you know, uh, people in duress. Mm -hmm. So I didn't do a cash out refinance, take out money to have dry, but I've, I've back, you know, we call it banked up a bunch of reserves ready for the next purchase. So I'm excited. You should be. Um, and I'm hoping more people are ready for that too. Anybody yeah. who's been saying, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm just, yes, I'm so excited. No, go ahead. Sorry. Anybody who's been saying, wait for the crash or the correction. We don't need that. 
wait for the deal, hunt for the deal every day. Yeah, you, this is the this is the crazy thing. I still believe there will be no crash. And when I say no crash, nationally, there might be a couple of cities, sure. And by let's define things. Crash is twenty percent or more. Okay, there may be a couple of cities, not nationally. I don't even think national numbers go negative. Historically speaking, it doesn't look possible given where we are in the debt structure. That said, who gives a rat's ass what the national numbers are? You just have to find one deal. I will find one, two, or three deals this year where I get a property 20, 30, or maybe even 40% under market value because I can close with cash or I can close in a week and other people can't. My deal does not make some national number fall. But I, yeah, dude, this is the time. Motivated sellers are out there. We will find them. The more times you try, your better chances. You miss every shot you don't take. So start doing the work, man. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait till you get one because, uh, you know, you've been doing the work and getting deals at market. Just wait till you get addicted to this. Oh my God, he gave me a 15% haircut. It's like, awesome. I was looking for a picture and I couldn't find it. Uh, it, was, it was rent increases by a couple of cities and New York had only gone up 6%. And that's what people are going to call a crash because it went up 6% while other places were going up 15 and 20%. Mm -hmm. So that it didn't increase as much will be the closest I think we come to some kind of a crash in certain markets. I don't, I don't think we'll ever see in for several years, two or three years, probably a 20% drop in price, too much demand, too many people can work from a distance, too many people homeschooling their kids. Where's the supply going to come from? The only reason my market fell 75% last time is because supply was an avalanche and it never stopped because the debt blew up. The debt doesn't blow up in a market where everybody's got 30-year fixed sub 3%. In fact, the debt now is an asset. The debt before was a liability that you wanted to run away from. Today, the freaking debt's an asset that you're going to hold on. You will lose a car to the repo man before you lose a 3% 30-year mortgage. You will get roommates because it's cheaper to live there than rent. Oh, these people don't understand. Yeah. So Dion, where can people find you? Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom. I do my live streams Tuesday afternoon, 4 p.m. Cool. Thanks, buddy. Ciao.